All right, now here you see, I tried to run this application and it did not work because port 8080 is taken. It's taken by that movie catalog application that I ran. This is a common problem when you're dealing with microservices. You would want to develop multiple microservices, have them running at the same time. You have two microservices talking to each other. You need to have them running at the same time, right? It's obvious. It may not be a problem that you face in production, because in production, you will rarely have two microservices running on the same machine. So you could technically have 8080 be taken on two different cloud instances, and then they talk to each other. But you still need to develop. You need things to work. Now, how do you solve this problem? The way to solve this problem is by looking at a property file here called application.properties. So if you expand the resources tab, uh, folder, you have this file called application.properties. You will see this in all Spring Boot projects that you create from any of the sources we talked about, using the CLI or the downloads. You have an application.properties folder, file. This allows you to specify configuration. You can specify key value pairs, which affect Spring which can affect your code if you can read the application.properties, get the configuration, and then do things differently. It's a way for you to make your application do different things without having to change the code and then compile it again. Right? Configuration file, just the same concept. So the way to have Spring Boot change ports is to say, don't use the default port. We didn't enter 8080. It picked 8080 because that's the default port. We have to say, don't use it, in which case you have to say, use this instead. So the way to do that is by specifying a property called server.port, and then the value of the port that you want to specify. Yeah, I will choose 8081. Hopefully, that will work. And with this, if I run this again, it will go to port 8081, and it's working fine now. See this? Can you have the application running on different machines in the Yes, which is what we are doing right now, yeah. Yeah. So right now, you have uh, the movie info service running on port 8081, and then the movie catalog service running on port 8080. And the Tomcat server will be in the, uh, each individual project itself, is it? It's a part of each individual project. So what happens is when you run, um, so Tomcat, actually a lot of these server servlet containers have programmatic APIs. How do you start a Tomcat container? We've traditionally been used to running a command and then it, uh, there's probably a batch file or something, a .sh file, and it runs it. Well, there is an alternative way of running Tomcat, which is download the Maven library for Tomcat, and then call an API, get the Tomcat object, and then say a .run. Not exactly the API, but you see what I'm saying, right? So there is an alternative way of doing this. Spring Boot uses that alternative way so that people can start microservices quickly without having to say, oh, download this thing and then run that. If you're running microservices, you need multiple instances so you need to download multiple instances of Tomcat, have it in separate folders, but it's such a pain. And Spring Boot makes it easy. So even in production, it would work to that? Uh, yes. 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 You would have a jar file, and you would run the jar file, just like you ran the main method here. It's like everything is taken care of by itself. You don't have to manage the Tomcat container. Sometimes. pass some argument to Tomcat. We're actually doing that right now. When you change the port, Whose port are we changing right now? Changing Tomcat's port, but we are not configuring the Tomcat. Well, the way to do this is the Tomcat container XML. There's some XML which lets you do that. You don't have to do that now. You're telling Spring. And since Spring is programmatically calling Tomcat, it's taking this as an input while it calls Tomcat. So Tomcat knows what to do. It will run as a process, just one process. Yes. And then you have a process running separately. So when you run two um, Java classes separately, it has its own uh, instance of Tomcat, which is why we're able to run two at the same time. So let me actually switch to um, localhost 80, I think 8082, 81. 81, slash movies, slash, ooh, you get the, the response. They have two Spring Boot applications running at the same time. They're still not microservices. We have kind of set the stage for it. Now we can have one call the other, all right? Um, what I recommend doing is not having any Spring Boot project use port 8080. Even though you can technically leave one running in 8080, I would say make it deliberate. Make every port choice deliberate so that you know that you are leaving 8080 blank so that 
for some reason something needs 8080 and you don't want to configure it, you can just have that run. It's not going to error out. So that's that's it's not essential, but it saved a lot of time in the past for me. So, so what I'm going to do here is go to IntelliJ and then uh, choose do the same thing for the other one as well, right? I'm going to do this for all the three. Uh, Applications. So I'm going to choose 8082 for uh, the movie info service. I'm going to choose 8083 for the ratings data service. And I'm going to choose 8081 for the movie catalog service. 